Bass, 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 all your bass, 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 all your bass are belong to us. Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today, I'm going to be rolling out some custom textured bases for my Warhammer miniatures. That's right. I'm going to be making some custom bases for my Warhammer miniatures because basing is actually part of the hobby that I really, really enjoy, but have not actually explored that much of. I've definitely worked with plenty of texture paints and done some cool stuff with that. I've done a little bit of work with some technical paints, adding say slime or blood effects to my bases as well, which has been really cool. And then of course, I have had a blast painting all of those really cool custom bases that sometimes come with the models that you get from GW and other miniature companies. Now, there is a way for us as hobbyists to actually make something similar to those really cool custom bases that we get with our mini sometimes. And the Chaos Cultists and I have been spending a bit of time starting to paint up our Cursed City miniatures, and I thought those minis would be perfect for rolling out some custom textured bases because I have a couple of really cool rollers from a company called Green Stuff World. Uh, this is not a sponsored ad or, any, or a sponsored video or anything. I just happened to pick up a couple of these rollers and I think they're really cool and I've not had a chance to use them a huge amount. So today I'm going to, I'm gonna pull out a couple of the ones that I think are gonna work sort of thematically for the Curse City minis and I'm going to do some testing with them to see where I want to go with it and how I want to use these rollers going forward. And we're gonna be doing this with a combination of the rollers as well as green stuff, which is the two-part epoxy putty we'll be laying down on the bases for our textures to actually get laid out into. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into making some custom textured bases. As I said, my intention for these bases is to find something that'll work for my Cursed City miniatures, but you'll notice that those Cursed City figures have some obnoxious holes in their bases because they're the push-to-fit models, and that's just kind of how they come. So instead, I'm going to be pulling out my big old drawer of uh, plain bases to find some that work better for this so that I don't have to fuss with those holes while I'm rolling out my green stuff and potentially have some like dips or changes in the pattern because the putty gets pushed into the groove there. So once I have a couple of the appropriate sizes out that I use the existing model's base to find, I'm also going to pull out a couple of smaller bases to do some further testing as well as to try out a couple of different paint schemes on. Now that I have my bases picked out, it's time to prepare the green stuff, which, as I said, is a two-part poxy putty that you can mix together. It comes in a blue and a yellow strip, often just in a little plastic thing together. The one that I have has a little gap conveniently between it, which is, just makes cutting it uh, in pieces a lot easier. And to do that, I just use a bit of a hobby knife to sort of slice the amount that I need from the putty strip that I have. Once I have that strip out, I'm going to mix the two epoxy colors together until it is a consistent and even green color tone, making sure to thoroughly wet my hands before doing this because green stuff, much like a lot of epoxy putties, can be very tacky as you're working with it. And I actually had a problem with this as I was going through this entire process a little bit where um, the texture roller at one point stuck to the putty as well as it starts sticking to my hands too often. So I definitely made sure to like re-moisten my hands as well as make sure my tools were all damp before I used them with this putty just so it wasn't sticking. Once I had it fully mixed together and everything, I'm going to roll it into a ball in my hands and then spread that using my fingers over top my first base trying to get as even of a thickness as possible. Once I'm pretty satisfied with that process, I'm going to take a uh, plain rolling pin that I got from my Jazz of, um, Jazzy Art Box a while back and use that to further smooth the putty down. This way I have as even and smooth of a text or um, pattern to be able to roll my texture onto so that that's the only thing that's there is just the texture for my roller. This goes pretty well, and once I am satisfied, I'm gonna take a little bit of the excess off that is spilling over the edges with my hands. All right, the green stuff is now nice and flat on my base, and I'm ready to pull out my textured rollers and start playing with some of these designs. There's two in particular that I'm going to be working with today, the temple design as well as the small cobblestone design. 
I figured between those two stylings, especially for these Cursed City minis, they would kind of go with the gothic um, old world vibe because the temple design has a lot of lions and fleur-de-lis on it, which also is going to work potentially really well for a sister army. So I might be using it for that in the future too, if this goes well, but it will also hopefully blend with that cobblestone design as well, because that just is going to have sort of a classic medieval look. And I think both of these are going to be thematically appropriate. So we're gonna start with the temple design. And once we have it uh, dampened from our water to make sure that it's not gonna stick to our putty, we're going to figure out which section of the roller we're wanting to use because they actually have a variety of little designs and patterns. I ultimately decided I wanted to focus on the more lion motif as opposed to the fleur-de-lis for this because it's for Cursed City. But if I do sisters, I'll probably focus the fleur-de-lis. I've, after I've chosen my section, I'm going to line it up with where I want it to start on the base and then press directly down with the roller, keeping as evenly as possible and then pressing forward so that I roll the pattern across the base. Once I get towards the edge, I'm gonna to try to lift it up a little bit. Now this is where having your tools damp or making sure that your fingers aren't too sticky really is useful because occasionally when you're lifting the, um, the roller off of the putty, it can sometimes try to like lift it off of the base fully. And I did have that happen to me a couple of times and it took a little bit of practice to get used to sort of rolling the roller to the edge and then lifting it off. But eventually I got it and I got some really good looking bases out of it now that the textures on it, I'm really pleased with them. So we have a little bit more cleanup to do in a couple more steps before we get to painting them. Let's go over, over those next. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. I set the bases aside for about five to six hours before trying to do any further cleanup on their edges because while I was rolling out the texture, I did smush it down a little bit and cause a little bit of overspill on the base on a few of them. There was a couple that I got it really even and others that I didn't. So after the five hour mark, I pull out a hobby knife and I'm going to trim off some of the edges. Ultimately, because this was a little bit of a challenge for me because I just, I get nervous when I'm using the hobby knives. I just, I've cut myself a couple of times in the past in school and everything, and I just had bad memories of those. So I always get really nervous when I'm using them. So what I actually found helpful for me is having the base flat on the table and then using the knife as I push it down towards the table to basically follow along the edge of the base and scrape some stuff off. Now this does create a little bit of some sharp angles, but I can smooth those over with my next step after the putty is finished curing, which takes about 24 hours. So after I was finished with my cleanup and I let them cure for those 24 hours, I came back the next day with some sandpaper, or actually not sandpaper, um, I actually just used a hobby file and I smoothed down the edges further so that it basically lined back up with the actual base itself so that they would be legal to use in my 40K armies or in the games I'd be using them in. And it worked really well. I'm pretty satisfied with how this went. I do still have a few maybe like uneven edges and everything, but because I went with a cobblestone slash flagstone um, texture, I actually think it works with the thicker material that I ended up putting onto the base. So I'm actually pretty pleased with the final design. Now that my bases are fully cured, I'm going to give them a spray prime of Mechanicus Gray, and then I'm going to, for the cobblestone bases, two of them actually, I'm going to do a dry brush of Wraithbone, a very heavy one in fact, and then for all of the temple bases and then the one final small cobblestone base that I made, I'm going to give those an equally heavy dry brush of Gray Sear. Now the reason I'm doing this is because for the cobblestone bases in particular, but also the temple bases, I'm gonna be using a combination of contrast paint and dry brushing to create some quick and easy basing effects to make these look really cool with not a lot of effort. And this is basically the foundation for how I'm going to do that. Next, I'm going to apply some Agros Dune to all of the bases I painted using Wraithbone. And then I'm going to put Basilicanum Gray on all of the bases that I painted in Gray Seer. Now, when it comes to those temple bases, I wanna be a bit more careful when I'm applying the Basilicanum Gray because unlike the cobblestone, I actually have some additional colors I want to apply to them. 
because they have these really cool patterns and everything. And I thought it'd be fun to make it look more like a painted floor. So we're gonna start with the gray, but keeping it just to the flagstone bits. Anything that has the lion, the sort of like, um, floral pattern that goes around it or any of the fleur-de-lis that are off to the side. We're going to try not to get too much basilicanum gray on those at all. We are going to do a little bit maybe of a light wash with some thinned basilicanum just to get that color into the recesses a bit so it looks more consistent like it is in fact painted stone, but we don't want that color to be quite as dark over those sections of the base so we can apply some additional colors next. With our base coats down on the model, it's now time to do some additional dry brushing. And this is actually going to wrap up all of the cobblestone bases for us, because it's a really simple design. For the ones that got the Agros Dune, we're going to do a light dry brush using Tyrant Skull, just to make them look kind of like sandstone. Um, for the one small one that we did in gray, that's going to get a dry brush using Longbeard's Gray, just to give us a very classic gray stone look. And then the temple bases will also get this dry brush of Longbeard's Gray. Now I'm going to actually do a little bit of a heavier dry brush using this color over top of those sections that have the pattern as I've been speaking about them already. Mostly because I just want to make sure that the contrast paint I'm about to apply to them is as bright and bold as possible because I'm going to knock it back as my last step to really make it blend with my stone pattern. So without further ado, let's jump to that. Jumping into those colors that I want to apply next, I'm going to be using a Yacht in Yellow, Magos Purple, and Flesh Terrors Red because those are some of my favorite contrast colors and between the lion, the floral pattern, and then the fleur de lis, I thought it would just be a nice blend. Now this went really well and I'm very happy with the colors that I chose. I will say for the Magos Purple in particular, I had to layer that color a couple of times, I think three times, to really get the color that I wanted because that uh, particular contrast paint is very, very pale. I also had one point where I completely forgot what I was using the yellow on and painted the wrong thing in that color. So I had to go back in with some lighter tones. I think I ended up using the gray sear again and do some tidying up before I reapplied the correct color that I actually wanted to be in that section. So I made a few mistakes, but honestly that happens as you're doing some testing and feel free to, because that's part of what this is all about. I wanted to do these because I wanted to figure out what I was going to be using for my Curse City miniatures. And now that I've played around with them, tried out some colors, done a couple of different cobble designs and everything, it worked beautifully. Now, once my base coat colors are down, I do want to soften them a bit because they're a bit bold. And while I do want it to be a painted floor, I still want it to look aged and have those colors blend in with the gray tone that I've already achieved. So to do that, I'm going to water down some Basilicanum Gray once more and apply it specifically just to those color regions, as well as doing a little bit of spot shading on the one base that has a larger section of flagstone to try to get into those crevices between the flagstone a bit more to pop those shadows because I thought that my um, initial coloring of Basilicanum had kind of got washed out a little bit from them and gotten a little bit too much of my dry brush color on them. So this saved it a little bit and now I'm really happy with the final design. And here they are, my custom rolled textured bases. And I'm really happy with how these came out. It was a little bit of a nerve wracking process for this because I had not used these kinds of materials that often. And I get really nervous when I'm going into a new part of the hobby that I haven't explored a huge amount. But ultimately, it ended up being a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this and I have some really cool ideas for some bases for some of my future armies that I want to be building for the channel. So I'm really excited to be having done this and tried these out. I also am really happy that I finally have a base for my little Nurgling Chuck because he has been baseless for quite a while. He's been just sitting in my cabinet next to my Death Guard army. And it's just, I, I'm very happy to have him like mounted onto something and just being jolly on his little base, walking around with his helmet. Cause that is by far one of my favorite Nurglings that I've ever painted. Um, but let me know what you guys have thought. How many of you have made your own custom bases in the past or are going to in the future? What techniques do you use when you're making them? And what are your favorite designs to work with? Because I have a couple other ones that I want to try out, but I just didn't think they would be useful for the thing that I was planning for this particular project. But there's a lot of really cool designs out there. So let's talk about it down in the comments. 
I have been Angela. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see more hobby content and Warhammer news videos. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.